The dark portal looms over Azeroth once again. The Burning Legion is preparing its forces as we speak to invade the place we've called home for the last two years. But before that happens, we're going through the portal and taking the fight to them just like we did 14 long years ago. Only this time, things are going to be a little... different. The mantra of hashtag some changes is in full force, with the community calling for things to be changed with Blizzard listening in some cases, as is the case with the tinnitus debuff being added to the leatherworking drums, or the arena rating requirements for arena gear being lowered in response to community outcry when rating requirements were implemented for arena season 1, with other changes being met with resistance from the community as a whole. Recently, Blizzard released the infamous not a bug list, just like they did when Classic first came out. Now while this list isn't as expansive as the one that came with Classic, there's some interesting aspects of the game that are working true to original TBC according to Blizzard. In this one, I want to take a look at some of these items on the not a bug list and the impact they will have on the game, and in the true spirit of some changes, look at some changes that could be made. Let's get into it. The release of Classic back in August of 2019 came with its growing pains. Queues to get into the game were insanely long, and trying to kill anything in the open world was a task with how overpopulated the small amount of servers we had at launch were. To combat this, Blizzard implemented layering, a way to separate players on the same realm into different instances of the server, thus increasing the amount of mobs and resources without drastically changing the game experience. In true classic fashion, players would abuse layer swapping to get more resources. To kill more mobs which brought speculation to the world first level 60 race for example, or to just get onto the same layer as a certain baldy in the community. To cut down on the amount of people constantly transferring layers, moving between layers will take progressively longer with each swap. The journey into Outlands will need to be layered, especially on large servers, to be even remotely playable, and creating a system that softly locks players into the layers they're on and dissuades them from transferring is a great change and will make the opening weeks a little more bearable. A hunter and his pet are inseparable in WoW Classic. Where the hunter goes, his pet goes, and when his pet enters combat, so does the hunter, regardless of if the hunter is actually attacking the mob. In TBC, a hunter and his pet are treated as separate entities. A pet can attack a target without putting the hunter into combat, letting the hunter do out of combat things such as eat and drink while he sends his pet to do the dirty work. Where this really stands out is in Arena. A hunter can send his pet onto an enemy and do these out of combat things if he wants to, but since he's out of combat, he's susceptible to abilities such as sap, right? Wrong. While technically out of combat, the hunter is still considered in combat when being evaluated as a valid target for abilities that require the character to be out of combat, like sap for example. Pets also have another advantage in that if you command your pet to attack an enemy and that enemy goes into stealth, your pet will chase that person down but will not directly attack them. They will just stand there like a pointer dog, exposing the location of the enemy in stealth. This quote unquote not bug is not game breaking at all, but just interesting to see how combat evaluation and hunter pets work in TBC. On the topic of arenas, arenas are one of the biggest, if not the biggest parts about TBC, and players will do anything and everything to gain an advantage in them. For those that don't know, a player's hitbox changes depending on the size of that player in Classic, and in turn their combat range is affected as well. So those big chonky Tarn boys can actually hit people from further away compared to other characters. Where this comes into play is that a Tarn can, in some cases, hit enemy players through barriers such as the pillars in the Grand Arena. And if it's a Tarn meleeing another Tarn, you can hit them all the way through the widest point of the Nagrand pillar. Is this feature in the game something that should be changed or does it give an unfair advantage? Not at all. Things like this are what make Classic great, it's not something that will make or break someone achieving Gladiator, rather a cool little nuance to the game that is true to its Classic form. Just like in Classic, we will see mages AoE farming their little gnome hearts away to get levels or help others get levels by way of boosting. The AoE cap implemented in TBC was a mere speed bump for AoE mage farmers, as many farms have already been found, most notably in Slave Pens. Blizzard has implemented a quote unquote fix for the Slave Pens farm, but they actually didn't fix it completely and it is 100% still doable, but that's a whole other story. One change that you mage farmers will need to be aware of going into TBC is that in the beta, mages were quick to point out that arcane concentration does not proc with Blizzard, and Blizzard, the company, not the spell, was quick to slap onto their not a bug list that this is true to the original game. 
With this change, AoE Mage Farmers are opting against Arcane Concentration in their builds and is something you AoE Farmers should be aware of. Alright, now I'm gonna keep it real for a second here. There's one thing on this not a bug list that is so bad, so egregious in design, that I almost don't want to play the game because of it. The Cenarian War Hippogriff, one of the most underrated mounts in my opinion, does not have a ground animation. I know, you heard that right. This poor Hippogriff is forever enslaved in the air, never being able to touch down and relieve his wings. If the sum changes movement could change one thing, it should be to relieve this beautiful bird from its burden of flight. Justice for the Cenarian War Hippogriff. That's all I'm going to say. The big ticket item on this not a bug list is Blizzard addressing the Druid Energy Regeneration Tick Timers. For those that don't know, one of the biggest finds in the TBC beta was that a Druid's Energy Tick Timers are reset when they enter cat form. The implication of this is that when a Feral Druid power shifts, they're effectively missing out on 20 energy every time they do it with this timer reset. Now according to Blizzard, this is true to the original game, but is that a good thing? In an atmosphere where so many things are already being changed about the game, both by request of the community and not by request, this seems like an interesting thing for Blizzard to point out and say, oh no, that's true to TBC, it's not a bug. Feral Druids aren't powerhouse DPSers in Classic, nor will they be in TBC. If this energy reset timer was completely game breaking and Feral's topped the DPS charts and it turned into Classic 2.0 but this time it's kitty cats instead of warriors, I'd understand this change. But in this instance, my heart goes out to the dedicated Feral Druid players that are already low on the DPS charts, and with this change sends them even lower. Of all the things on this not a bug list, I would love to see this one changed, especially because it's a change back to a classic era mechanic, not a change inspired by future changes to the game. There's a ton of other interesting items on this not a bug list, such as Cloak of Shadows only giving 80% resist chance against enemy players rather than the full 90%, Chain Lightning having a chance to proc Lightning Overload on each hit of the Lightning, making Ellie Shamans even more fun, and certain Pally Seals not being able to be twisted into one another. I'll post a link to the full list in the description, and I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments. Do these not bugs or features have a place in the game? If you had to pick one thing from the list to change, what would you change and how would you change it? We're in a very interesting position going into TBC, with what's behind the portal being shifted and altered seemingly every day. Some for the good and some for the bad, depending on your point of view. Before you click out of the video guys, if you enjoyed this video or have enjoyed some of my other videos, hit that subscribe and like button on the way out. It helps the channel out a ton and I greatly appreciate it. I'm also live on Twitch throughout the week and will be streaming TBC launch almost 24-7. So stop by, say hi, ask some questions if you have any, all that kind of stuff. That's it for me today though guys, thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.